Welcome to this overview of PXF Kill Spill. So here I have an image of somebody standing in front of a green screen and I want to neutralize the green screen. So I can use a PXF Kill Spill for that. I'm going to go under Pixel Fudger, PXF Kill Spill, and connect it to my image. Here we go. And e right there by default, it's already doing a pretty good job. So I'm neutralizing the green screen. Uh, so how does it work under the hood? How is this magically working? Well, let's take a simple example here. So I have a green screen and my green screen is at 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. These are the RGB values. The gray shirt is at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So the t-shirt is neutral and the skin tone here is at 1.6.4. So notice there's more green in the skin tone than there is in the green screen, but it doesn't appear green because there's lots of red and lots of blue. Same with the t-shirt. It doesn't appear green even though there's the same amount of green as the background because we also have a lot of red and a lot of blue. So a lot of uh, beginners think that the spilling is simply raising or lowering the green channel. So let's try that. Here I have a grade with the multiply set to 0.2 on the green channel. So I'm basically scaling the green channel and you can see that our background is neutral. It's now gray because 0.5 multiplied by 0.2 equals 0.1. So all three values are the same now. This looks gray, but we've destroyed everything else. Of course, we've got the gray shirt that's completely magenta and the skin has become pink. So everything is broken. You want to limit the green channel on every pixel so that it's not higher than the other two channels. So the limit will be different for every pixel. So let's take a deeper look. So we have three pixels that we want to despill. We've got the green screen, one pixel that's green, one pixel of skin tone and one pixel of t-shirt. So for despill, the formula usually is the average of red and blue will create the limit for your green channel. So if we look at the green screen, our limit should be 0.1 because if we do the average of red and blue, that's going to be 0.1. So our limit should be 0.1. We should lower the green channel all the way down to 0.1. If we take the t-shirt, for example, our limit is 0.5 because red and blue is at 0.5. So the green is already at the limit. We don't need to modify the green channel. So notice that we have the same 0.5, but this one needs to go down and this one does not because the other two channels are pretty high. For the skin tone, we are doing the average again of red and blue. So if we do the average of 0.4 and 1, the average is 0.7. So our limit is 0.7. Our green is under the limit. We don't need to change the green. So that's uh, how you would do a basic despill. So this pixel needs to change. The green needs to go lower. This one doesn't. It's not green. And this one doesn't. It's not green either. If your formula, your basic formula is not giving you whatever you want, then you need to tweak it. So there's two main ways to tweak it in kill spill. We have two controls. The first one is the limiter and the other one is suppression or suppression bias. So limiter is very easy to understand. Limiter is simply you moving the limit up and down. So if you increase the limiter, you're pushing the limit up. And if you move down the limiter, you're pushing the limit down. Suppression bias is how much red and blue do you want in that average? By default, it's 50-50, but if you swing the suppression one way, then you will end up using the red channel only as the limit. So in this case, our limit would go higher because red is pretty high. Or you can swing the suppression the other way. And as you move the suppression the other way, you will use less and less of the red channel and more and more of the blue channel. And eventually you will end up with a low limit because your blue is low. That will cut down on your green because it's gonna be capped at 0.4 in this example. So if we look at before, this is our values. After, this is what would happen. So before our green is too high here on the green screen, the green is fine on these two other pixels. So after the despill, these two pixels won't change. This guy will go down. However, this looks bright. And after the despill, this looks dark. So we need to compensate for the difference in luminance. So there is an extra step that is Luma com compensation. And now 
this is our real final result. So really what's happening is we're not just lowering the green channel, we're also lowering the green but hiring red and blue to compensate for Luma. Honestly, I rarely think about that step because it's done automatically and I don't really control it. So I like to think of the despill like that, even though that's not really what's happening completely under the hood. So let's go back to our real image here. And I'm going to add a couple blobs, pure red and pure blue blobs here so we can see what's going on. So this is our original image that we want to despill. Let's go back to our default despill. So if we play with the limiter, let's say we bring the limit up. As we move the limiter up, now we can see green uh, showing around the red and the blue blob and everywhere in the green screen. So if we move the limiter really high, eventually there won't be any suppression at all because the limit is so high that no green channel is hitting that limit. So that's the limiter. If we go too low, then eventually we will get rid of any green halos, but if we go way low, then our limit is so low that we end up with a magenta image. So limiter is pretty brute force. It's useful if you have a little bit of green in your subject uh, and you need to let some green through, for example. So let's put the limiter back to default. Alternately, we can use suppression. So if we swing suppression all the way to the left, so all the way down to zero here, then we're using only the red channel as the limiter and the blue channel is not used at all. So in this case here, the red channel is pretty high. So you can see green around the red blob. I can also see a little bit of a green edge around the red headphones. I can see a bit of green in the hair. That's all because my limiter is only the red channel. There's a lot of red here. There's a lot of red here. That means the limit is high and green is allowed to go too high. If I swing the suppression the other way, all the way up to one, then I'm using the blue channel as the limiter. And now I can see a green halo around the blue uh, blob and I can see my hair turning magenta. That's because blonde hair doesn't have a lot of blue. So the blue being the limit the, means the limit is really low and I don't have enough green in the hair here. So I need to find a happy medium that tries to accommodate everything. In this case, it's going to be hard to accommodate all of these things together, the hair, the red and the blue. So we probably would need to do multiple kill spills if we really had that. However, this is pretty synthetic. You rarely have pure, pure red like that in a shot straight out of camera. It's possible, but it's quite rare. So if we just use the regular photo, this looks pretty reasonable if we go back to default values like that. Your other adjustment you have here is spill tweak. So spill tweak can adjust the intensity and the color of the despill. So if you need your despill to be darker or brighter, you can also uh, make it a certain color. So if she's meant to be comped in front of a fire truck, then you can make the spill red or whatever color you want. So you can swing the, the green screen to whatever color you want. So that's one use of a spill tweak. You can also use it to neutralize imperfect despills. So here I have another example. If I put a kill spill on it, right now I'm despilling the green stuff. If I switch it to red, then I'm going to despill the red stuff. And if I switch it to blue, I'm going to despill the blue stuff. But our blue screen is not really blue. It's more of a cyan than uh, blue, meaning there's a lot of green in there. So our despill doesn't look quite right uh, out of the box. There's also a bit of blue spill on our red gadget here. So I'm going to swing the suppression more towards blue because there's too much red here and that uh, allows the limit to go too high. So I'm going to swing my suppression to get rid of the blue bounce on my red gadget here. So that looks pretty good, but this is not neutral. So to neutralize it, I can use spill tweak so I can amp up the red here to compensate for the lack of red in the blue screen. So that looks fairly neutral. I'm pretty happy with this. 
Lastly, there's a mix knob now, so we can blend between our uh, despill and the original value, so you can blend between the two. And of course, there is a mask knob, so you can use a mask to limit the effect to some area of the frame only, so you can limit your despill using a mask. So there you go. That was an overview of PXF Kill Spill. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.